started and I'm going to share presentation that we'll be following through today. So this is the one and we'll go full screen mode. And it's better if we start from the beginning, I guess. So let's go here. OK, so again, welcome everyone. This is the info session for the market readiness accelerators. My name is Raul Falil and I'm the startups program manager within Impact Ventures division, meaning that I'm the one behind the action of the market readiness accelerators and other programs that we are undertaking within EIT Uva Mobility. So this is the agenda that we'll be uh, uh, checking today. Um, market readiness accelerators, what is that? And which are the different thematics? Because we have five accelerator programs within the market readiness accelerator. The offering, general offering, common for all the programs that we have within the market readiness accelerators. Eligibility requirements, what do you have to check in order to apply? The selection process, we'll be uh, talking about how to apply or the eligibility criteria that we'll be checking and what are the timings. I will refer also to the additional info sessions that each one of the programs will be having and where you can get the specifics that you want for any specific market readiness accelerator. And we'll close the meeting with a Q&A session, so you will have about 10 minutes to post questions that my colleagues here in the call, Mario, Gemma and Ninke, will be noting and passing to me so I can answer. So let's get into specifics. First point with the market readiness accelerator, the thematics. First, there is the big why. Why would you apply as a startup to our market readiness accelerators? So the programs are intended to support entrepreneurs since the very beginning of the startup journey. So this already places the startups stage at the beginning of their lives. We're looking for early stage startups. And the program is intended to build this consistent business basis, basically to address the most critical aspect of the new cost, the new companies, the product market fit, where we also see where is the where the most failures in terms of businesses happen. So this is the thematics that we have within the market readiness accelerators. You can take each one of those five five blocks as one program, which actually they uh, work independently. We have the sustainable cities and clean mobility, the future mobility. Below you see also the, the branding name that you will see attached to each one of the, uh, of the programs. We have the inclusive mobility also referred to better mobility, smart mobility or the MS consortium accelerator and urban air mobility as urban air mobility plus accelerator. So let's get a brief picture of each one of those. Here we have the future mobility accelerate to move. So this is intended for startups early stage again that have solutions within artificial intelligence, um, <clears throat> blockchain, 5G, B2X or Internet of Things. And at the right, right hand side, you see the consortium members. So we work with partners. Those are co-funded programs and we recruit the top notch partners that we have in our ecosystem to run the action for each one of the accelerators. Um, just for time constraints, I'm just going to show the picture of the different organizations that we have for each one of the uh, accelerator programs. I'm not going to describe each one of the partners. Uh, you can get this information at each one of the web pages that my colleagues will be sharing at the at the chat. Direct link to the web page for each one of the accelerators where you can check the details. Let's go with the second one. We have the inclusive mobility, also known better mobility accelerator. Basically, here we're looking for startups that have solutions uh, uh, tackling the uh, inclusivity factor. Less represented groups, elderly people, kids, making mobility more accessible for everyone. With the smart mobility, this is a, a consortium that is based in uh, Sweden, Germany, and Israel. And basically, they are intending to 
foster the ecosystem of those countries. So you have a solution that you are specifically constituted or targeting Sweden, Germany or Israel markets. This is a, a program worth checking for you. Sustainable cities and clean mobility with uh, uh, we have the largest consortium here running the action uh, with companies in uh, Germany. We have uh, Italy also and. Do, 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 am I, uh, Istanbul also Turkey with this back. And this is intended as a program to create more sustainable freights and good transportation in cities. Addressing clean mobility as a core. Last but not least, we have urban mobility. This is all um, anything related. If you have a startup solution that is focusing on um, uh, drone solutions or enabling technologies, we have three core fields, which is um, uh, ground enabling infrastructures, emergency situations, safety, security, and surveillance. So this is uh, the program that would be the program to go for. Let's move to the second point. What is the common offering that we have within the market readiness accelerators? We have a 30K of worth of support services. This includes the business coaching. This includes the uh, mentoring during a six month uniquely designed accelerator program. We provide 2.5K as a grant intended to cover travel expenses because for each one of the accelerator programs we have on-site events and we are expecting the selecting startups to attend those events to the amount they can of course uh, we know that there are also other duties uh, uh, for the selected startups but this financial aid is to uh, lower the burden to attend these uh, these events organized within the program and also we offer tickets to tomorrow mobility and we will conduct an impact assessment, which will also help you understand our pivotal role as an impact investor uh, that we have at uh, Impact Ventures. Uh, apart from the programs, we also do investments. So we also want to know what is the impact that you can provide as a startup with a solution related to urban mobility to society. And of course, you will get access to additional additional EAT Uber mobility funding opportunities or not only funding but also um, other business opportunities uh, <clears throat> talent acquisition all this is again final via the growth lab which is the platform that you have used to register to this uh, info session let's talk about the eligibility requirements in order to be eligible to apply to one of the accelerator programs that we have first and foremost we know that the we are a pan-european organization we receive applicants from all over europe eu 27 and associated countries but the application that's a must to be in english language and we also emphasize this for the attachments that you provide otherwise the information provided will not be considered if it's written in another language that's not english we're looking for teams with at least two full time employees, not a single founder. And not necessarily connected to monetary compensation. What we mean with that, what we mean with that is that we understand the uh, entrepreneur journey. We understand the, that the startups when they are at the very initial phases, uh, sometimes even if you have an uh someone working for the company full-time committed sometimes there is no monetary compensation to it so even though there is not a base lead attached to a given employee if it is full-time committed to the company we count that as a full-time employee we're looking for a startup that are startups that are incorporated in eu 27 countries or eu associated countries you have here a link to the third countries associated to Horizon Europe. And also remember that this information is extracted from the guide for applicants. You can also find the links at uh, each one of the guide for applicants for each one of the accelerators. Why is this important? Because we'll be asking for the registration certificate 
in order to join the program. So if you have been selected, you will get the communication. And in five days, you will have to provide the registration certificate of your company to prove that the company has been constituted in one of the countries that are listed above. We have here a cap on the incorporation date of any given startup. You have to be, or the company has to be constituted after 31st December 2013. So we have this 10 years cap since the company was constituted. And this is a new requirement from this year, which is we are accepting a maximum of two applications per startup to any two thematic market readiness accelerators. Note as important the reference to point six of the guide for applicants, because if you are intending to apply to more than one market readiness accelerator, we'll be requesting you to indicate the priority of the application. This is intended to um, avoid what we faced in previous editions, which is startups applying to all the programs that we had. So first, we are not looking for startups that do an spread and pray in terms of applications. We are looking for startups that know where they want to go, that have checked very in detail the guide for applicants, that they know the offering for each one of the programs, and that they have clear where they want to apply to. So we do not perceive um, positively if a startup is applying to all the accelerators. Please note that, that as a, an important point. And then applicants, even if they apply to two market uh, readiness accelerators, they can only be selected in one. So that's also important, uh, just uh, emphasizing the, the previous point. You will not be selected for more than one program during 2024 for EAT of our mobility. Okay. Let's talk about the selection process. And let me check the timing just to check that we have time for the Q&A. Call opens. So you have uh, seen already the uh, the social media posts and the announcements. The call open on the 1st of February 2024. So now we are in the application process phase. And the call deadline. Is the 15th of April 24. Then we'll be conducting the eligibility check. So from the points that I listed before, which are all those ones, we'll be doing the ACID test. If an applicant is not eligible, we will communicate them with a knockout uh, uh, letter announcement. And this would conclude the first phase of the admissibility and eligibility check. If the applicant is eligible, we'll move to the online evaluation which will be taking place from the 22nd of April until the 3rd of May 24. During this phase, we'll have internal and external evaluators doing an assessment of each one of the applications. Internal evaluators are the ones from the consortium members running the, the action for the given program, also EAT, Uber Mobility uh, internal staff. And external evaluators are evaluators that have no direct link with the ATU of mobility or the consortium partners. We're intending to have a, an impartial process here with the independent evaluators stepping in in the second phase of the online evaluations. By the time the second phase is concluded, we'll have the invitation letters for the ones that made it to the um, uh, in the top rank or a rejection letter for the ones that did not qualify for the live pitches. And then we'll enter the third phase, the live pitch. This is a specific for each program, for each accelerator program. So you will see that there are different dates where the live pitches are conducted for each one of the programs. After the live pitches, which will also host internal and external jury members will have the final results announcement expected for the 16th of May. 
After that, when you get the confirmation, if your startup has luckily been selected, you'll be required to accept the candidacy or the, um, the inclusion into a given accelerator program. And then it will come the formali formalization of the agreement. After that, the program for each one of the accelerators will kick off. OK, and how to apply, how to apply to uh, the micro readiness accelerators? That would be more on the application process, more than the selection, but still uh, it's relevant for you to know. If you want to apply, you have to go to a workforce. My colleagues will post the, the link to the platform here in the chat. And this is the main page that you will see. I'm just going to jump to a workforce to show you how it looks like. Once you have logged in, you will see this information. You will see a season, you will see your entry name, and then you will have to select the program type. This is super small, so let me, oops, still super small, doesn't change. So, well, just for, uh, I'm, I'm describing it. Uh, there is an EAT Uber Mobility program over here, which is the last one. Now you see it here on the program type. Then you will have to select the type of call. Again, it's super small. So I'm just going to select the market readiness accelerator that you can see now at the call field. You get a quick description and the link to the web page if you want to check further information. And here, you will have to select which one of the market readiness accelerators you want to apply. You have the five of them listed. So I'm just going to select the first one. And whenever you select one of the accelerator programs, you will get all the information that is relevant for you before proceeding with the with the application. And again, a link to the web page where you have extended information and also the guide for applicants for each one of the programs. You can download before starting the application, the application fields. So if you download the blank entry PDF, you will get each one of the questions without, uh, <clears throat> without the fields, without the answers being filled, of course. And you can also find each one of the questions that you will be required to answer at the guide for applicants. So you can find that at Annex 1. Once you enter the company name, let's put the date as of today, you save a next, and then you get the different tabs where you will have to fill in the information. If you miss to fill one of the fields, you will get a, um, a note uh, before saving and submitting the application where some information is missing. Let's get back to the presentation. And now, yes, about the selection process. So we talked we talked during the, the timeline about the different phases. So here are the specifics for the second phase, the online evaluation, which are the criteria that will be assessed. We have four different criteria, excellence, innovation for the first one, team and structure, impact, and implementation and overall merit. Each one of those blocks is worth five points maximum for a total of maximum 20 points. For the third phase, the live pitches, we'll be evaluating two main fields. First, the pitch itself. So the pitch deck that you provide and you run through during the, the, the live pitch session. And then an assessment of the overall fit to the accelerator, to the specific accelerator that you are applying to. Each block is worth 10 points for a maximum of 20 points. After the, uh, after the evaluations have been conducted, we'll be having a sum up of a scores between second phase and third phase, which will give the final punctuation for any given applicant. We have checked already the selection process, so let's see 
what other information you can get if you have interest in one specific accelerator. Each one of the programs will have additional info sessions. Here we have again the five programs. And we have planned a maximum of two sessions per program. Please mark those dates as relevant ones if you already have identified the one program of your interest. You have for most of them two info sessions apart from Urban Mobility, which has one on the 3rd of April. The links to each one of the info sessions will be shared via the Growth Lab. So if you have interest in joining them, please pay attention to the, um, the live feed that we have at the Growth Lab, and there they will be posted. With that, we have covered the main content for this first info session that is an overall overview of the market readiness accelerators and the different programs that we have within it. And we'll take some, some questions. We have about 10 minutes. So I'm going to stop the presentation here, get back to you. Oop, oop, oop. You're sharing your screen, so no need it anymore. And I'm back with you. So, uh, Mario, we have a Nike. couple of questions in the chat. Check. Can you see them? Yes, going to that now. Okay, to clarify, there is 30K for a startup to spend on EAT staff and services. No. 30K is what the offering, what the support is worth. We are funding this activity um, with uh, um, funds from the European Commission. So we have a bucket of money to finance each one of the programs. So we divide that bucket of money by the startups that have been selected or that will be supported within the program. This gives an average of 30K worth of services. So that's not finite direct financial support. This is the in-kind services that you will be getting within the program. So day rates for service, what kind of output can we expect? How do you undertake program market fit research? How much of the budget? OK, those are a lot of questions. So day rates for services, again, this is not a direct financial contribution. This is what the uh, program is worth for each one of the supported startups. The kind of output that you can expect. Uh, I need some more specifics on this, Zach. What you will get is a, a six month support to make sure that the product market fit is there. Basically to avoid uh, what I mentioned at the very beginning, one of the main reasons for startups not moving forward with their businesses. So you will get experts directly linking with you. You will get industry expertise on the specific field of the thematic accelerator, uh, that if you check the, um, the thematic fit and you apply to one, that should be of your interest. How do you undertake product market feed research? So this is, uh, uh, again, this is uh, tackled by each one of the accelerator programs because they provide the expertise in the specific thematic field. So the partners provide the experts in the specific industry fields, and that's when the market feed is assessed. How much of the budget can we spend on market research data? So does this doesn't apply? There will be no budget on market research. Again, the 30K is the worth of program. And the 2.5K that we do provide as a grant are intended for traveling, attending the events that are planned within the program. I'm moving to the next one from Frank. The application needs a lot of information. Is there an offline form to complete the entire information request? Otherwise, there is a risk of running into a timeout before every tab is populated. Frank, here, um, I can already advance you that there is a, a cap on the information that you can provide on text fields at the application form. A cap in terms of characters or in terms of words meaning that we do not expect uh, 10 pages to answer uh, what is your innovative product. 
you will get, if I recall correctly, um, 1000 characters to describe it there. This is intended to limit the amount of information that we get from the startups to be able to evaluate each one of the applicants in the same way. And we also expect the information to be concise and straight to the point. And yes, there is in form not to complete, but for you to check what is the information provided. So at each one of the accelerator web pages that my colleagues shared here in the chat, you have the guide for applicants. And if you enter the guide for applicants, there is Annex 1, which has all the information, all the fields that will be request, required at the workforce. Okay. Who can we talk to? Uh, and besides, Frank, uh, remember that if you enter a workforce as of now um, and you say, okay, let's see what information is requested there, before starting to fill in any data, you can download the blank play, the blank, the blank application form. So else, again, there you have all the information that will be requested. Who can we talk to about choosing the right program? Jacob, here I would recommend you to first do an initial screening from your side. So I assume that it's not the very same applying to the Urban Air Mobility Plus Accelerator, which is intended for drone enabling technologies uh, when compared to future mobility, for example. So first here, I would recommend you to do a close check on the information that is posted there for each one of the programs. And then if you have questions about, is it a better fit to apply between these two or three programs to join the info sessions that will be conducted? The ones that I just showed at the end of the presentation. Again, the info sessions for each one of the specific programs will be posted at the Growth Lab. And there you will get a direct representative managing the accelerator program where you can post all the all the questions related to the specific content, for example, for any given, uh, any given accelerator. Would you please explain once again the difference between internal and external jury members? Are internal jury members provided by consortium members involved in phase two? Whitbenson. So internal jury members are the ones that are employed by EAT Uva Mobility or any of the consortium members running the accelerator program. External evaluators are all of those that have no direct contractual link with EAT Uva Mobility or the consortium members. And those are directly chosen by the consortium members. So the ones with the specific knowledge on the accelerator program. Ella, we're a bit over time, but if uh, uh, you want to stay in the call, I will continue to answer the questions. Ella from IP Gallery, is this also for startups that already have the technology but aren't registered yet? No. We are only targeting startups that are constituted. So you have to get the Chamber of Commerce registration note and you have to provide it in order to be accepted uh, to join any program. Chamber of Commerce or equivalent administration that sometimes differs from country to country. Zach, simplify the question is, how do you undertake PMF, you will have to explain what is the PMF. How much contact with industry? Do you have energy and electric vehicles specialists and industry contacts? I'm going to start with the latest one. Energy and in electric vehicles specialists and industry contacts. Yes, this is provided for the program um, in, the, in the content of the program itself. So we do have as EAT Uva Mobility experts in those fields, but we rely on the expertise of the partners running the program, which they even have a larger pool of uh, experts in the different industries. So by checking again the specifics for each one of the accelerator programs, you will see if the thematic covers electrification, for example, and then the industry expertise will be provided within the program. What are roughly 
the time commitments each month? So that's a good question. Uh, we have uh, differences between uh, programs. Um, the specific curriculum for each one of the programs, which I cannot go through, and I do not have all the details here with me with the five programs, uh, is detailed by the program managers, the consortium running the program itself. I would say that one session or the commitment per, per, per month would be at least one, two hours per week in terms of sessions and then extra education on the startup side if you intend to take the most out of each uh, of each program. Who can we talk to about choosing the right accelerator? It could be really good to get a pre-consultancy on that. OK, that's uh, Mustafa, that's a good point. Apart from joining the uh, the info session, the info sessions for each one of the programs, uh, we have not included any pre-consultancy on that. But if you have a specific questions for uh, different programs that you would uh, think about applying, I can provide you with uh, uh, my email for very specific contacts, very specific questions, and at least redirect you to the um info sessions or already provide you some some advice on which programs to focus on here is my email the product market fit okay pmf yeah okay it was related to the previous question if we are already graduates of the Beta Mobility Accelerator, can we apply to another program within the Market Readiness Accelerator, for example, Future or Smart Mobility? Anastasia from Omni Audio. Good to have you here, Anastasia. Um, I would recommend you to follow the startup journey that we have at EIT Uva Mobility. So basically, we expect an evolution on the, each one of the businesses that we support. And the next natural step would be the scale up program or the investment readiness program if you are intending to raise funds in the next 24 months. There will be, we have not entered into details for other accelerator, other programs rather than the market readiness accelerator, but we'll be having a session for the scale up program that might be the best suite for you just to ramp up commercialization and expand operations with international internationalization focus. Again, this session will be announced via the Growth Lab. So I would recommend you to check the scale up program. I do not see any other questions. Still 28 attendees that made it uh, seven minutes above the hour. So if there are no other questions, last minute questions, we are still taking them. OK, nothing else. So we're going to conclude the meeting here. Uh, we'll be posting the recording. We'll be announcing the info sessions for each one of the market readiness accelerators and the one for the scale up program, which is the one dedicated for more mature startups in the next days. Thank you everyone for being here. Thank you to my colleagues for the support on the chat and see you soon. Thank you Raul for coming. Thank you everyone. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye, Thank bye. You. have a nice day. You too. And looking forward to receive your applications. See you soon. <laughs>